I've made my own Sigillum de Ameth, and that is a uh, approximately nine inch wheel of wax covered with these strange designs. I'm moderately satisfied with the result, but it's taken me the best part of a year uh, to get to this point. So yeah, I thought I'd show you the final result and uh, a little bit of the thought process and a little bit of the journey. So first of all, what is the Sir Gillam D. A. Meth? Well, uh, John D., the uh, advisor to the Queen and uh, court magician to Elizabeth I, used such a device to contact angels. It comes as part of a kit, really, that, that's required. The magician uh, attempting to contact these angels would need also a ring, a specially made ring, a, a layman to put on their chest, uh, a special table on which to place the sigillum, and on top of the sigillum they would place a black scrying mirror. Uh, the four legs of the table would each rest on, on an equivalent sigillum, just uh, much smaller, about four inches across. And the whole uh, setup is quite convoluted and quite involved. And it's generally known as Enochian magic. If you're interested to know a lot more, then I strongly recommend reading Lon Milo Duquette's Enochian vision magic. Now, to talk a little bit about why I've made a uh, sigillum, I first of all discovered the sigillum when I was trying to find a suitable sigil to put onto a play mat way before I was interested in anything particularly uh, esoteric or occult. I had a game that was based on an H.P. Lovecraft uh, story and I wanted a, a nice play mat to play on and I wanted a, a suitably occult looking design uh, on in the background but I didn't want anything uh, particularly demonic since I was already aware of uh, the the power of some of these sigils and so I, I googled for a, a good sigil if, uh, if that makes sense and uh, and this is what came up I didn't research too far into it I liked the pattern took it, placed it on my mat, it looked fantastic, and played on this mat for a very, very long time until I found out about John D. I was like, oh, I recognize that. Uh, and then f found out quite a lot more about it through reading Jason Louv's book, uh, The Empire of Angels. And then I decided that I maybe I'd like to see the original one. And I went to the British Museum, uh, where you can go to the, just on the ground floor, right in the very back, uh, there's a big library. It's not in the Elizabethan area, which um, we went to first of all and found it closed and we had to wait for the following year to find out that uh, actually it's not kept in the Elizabethan area. It's kept in, in the part of the library that's accessible to the general public. And it's in a display case along with, with a couple of other uh, nice items that were also used by John Dee for his uh, angelic evocations. And it's such a beautiful object, I, I really wanted to have my own. They're available on Etsy at exorbitant prices. And um, yeah, I decided to try my hand at making my own. Now, creating the wheel of wax was actually the thing that took the longest. Uh, and the reason it's taken a year is because my first batch of wax was completely wasted. I, I used something like a baking tin, but uh, one kind of like this. This is a metal one. The one that I used was, uh, it was uh, glass on the bottom and silicon going around. And the trouble with these is that they're not airtight and they absolutely have to be airtight. And what happened is that as I melted down my wax, the first time there was no problem, but um, uh, there was problems with the first um, uh, pouring. And so I had to um, I had to melt it down again. And to do so, I put it in the oven and the melted wax just dripped through the bottom where it wasn't completely airtight. Yeah, and the silicon kind of expanded, but the glass didn't. Anyway, it was such a mess. I had to completely clean out my oven and cleaning out partly melted wax is just the biggest nightmare. You don't want that. So I then went ahead and bought this, just a, a, a one piece silicon cake mold. And there's this hard plastic ring that goes around it to make sure that it doesn't lose its shape, which is a great idea. It's, uh, it's 25 centimeters across, which is slightly larger than what's required. However, the wheel shrinks as it dries. 
uh, and, and condenses. Uh, and so you normally end up with about uh, five millimeters uh, on, on either side. However, uh, what happens as it shrinks is that you can see this is the top. It kind of uh, undulates like this. And this is very, very mild. What you normally get is a very, very strong undulation, which wasn't acceptable to me. And so what I ended up doing, well, first of all, I tried just turning it over and putting it on a hot frying pan so that the bottom would melt. I then let that cool down and had a look and there were massive bubbles everywhere so it was just completely ruined i had to um, melt the whole thing down again and then once the whole thing was kind of dry i melted it all down again uh, but not all the way so that there was a big big round slab of wax inside but covered in a, a, a small layer of melted wax and when that dried, we got the slightly milder undulation uh, effect that you can see here, which was, yeah, a little bit better. Right. Then what I did is that I took a printing of the sigillum at the right size. And because uh, it's slightly larger than A4 paper, I had to print it in two parts, cut one up and glue um, this part together so that the sigillum was complete. Uh, it's come unglued uh, because I've I've gone over the whole thing with a biro. You can see that it's um, it's uh, caused exactly the effect that I was after, which is like a, a dimpling right on the surface. So going very very strongly with a biro on every single little detail, and then I took a, a fine liner uh, and and went into every little nook and cranny and and filled it up with. Um, with ink and so I get this um, this rather beautiful object. Now these these white blotches that you can see I'm pretty sure that's the result of heating and cooling and heating and cooling the wax more than once. The, the first one that I made did not have those blotches. That's the first thing. The second thing is that if a tiny drop of water falls into your melted wax you're kind of in trouble in the very very early stages when i was just starting out i tried melting it down in a bain marie so i filled a pan with water um hot boiling water which which i, I put onto a slow simmer and yeah and melted the wax down like that however the problem with that is that it's just so close to water that little drops can fall in, which causes bubbles. And those bubbles just become bubbles. The water seems to be heavier uh, than the wax, and so it falls to the bottom. And so when you turn the, the final product over, you've got these crevices filled with just water, which, yeah, you can literally just dry up with, with a paper towel or, or whatever. It's, it's kind of weird to see but it does completely ruin your result so yeah what these could very well be tiny water bubbles uh, one last thing is that if your silicon container or mold is not completely perfectly clean and i mean absolutely clean then when the wheel dries down you can see that you can barely see it anymore but you can see that it cracks just on the edge and when when it's absolutely clean uh, that doesn't happen. It, on this side is what you can expect from a clean edge. On this side is what you can expect when you haven't quite cleaned it perfectly since your previous faulty attempt. <laughs> okay. Um, just a, a little word about this um, this back sigil, which is supposed to be in contact with the table. It's the AGLA, the Agla. Uh, which is one of the names of God. It's Ato Gebur or Gevur Leolam Adonai, and it's um, uh, You are mighty forever, O Lord. However, what any of this represents is um, thoroughly described in Lon Milo Duquette's Enochian Vision Magic book. Uh, I was certainly able to understand it as I was reading it, but um, I, I would have to learn it off by heart to know exactly how it goes. You, you're supposed to start at a particular place and then move a certain number of, of, uh, of squares along, and that gives you the name of one angel and, uh, and so on and so forth. And of course, all around, you've got some more angelic sigils. Um,
that are yeah that are that are actually quite beautiful. It's kind of interesting uh, also to see the way uh, that L was described here. So this is Oganel, and it's uh, basically a capital L with a little E. Uh, L being, of course, the name of God that is added to the end of angels' names. So here we have Orabiel. Uh, another thing that I've noticed a lot is the uh, the the regular occurrence of this twenty one eight. Which, um, having read the book quite a long time ago, I can't remember what that what that is. Twenty one eight, twenty one eight, quite regularly. It's not the only numbers, of course. You've got the number thirty there, uh, uh, and and here, and uh, yeah, just just uh, yeah, it's just a very beautiful object. There we go. So um, yeah, if you have any beautiful occult objects that are quite dear to you, then um, by all means leave your comments down below and. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, do leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and uh, subscribe down below if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and uh, take care. Bye-bye.